What's going on with Jalen Hyatt? Is he in Brian Dable's doghouse? Does he want to be traded from the New York football giants? There's a lot of rumors surrounding the second year explosive wide receiver and a lot of reasons as to why he has not been playing and a lot of thoughts out there. But on today's show, I'm going to tell you why the Giants have mismanaged the draft pick and the development of Jalen Hyatt, and they have an opportunity to fix it, and they must do it. So far through two weeks, Jalen Hyatt has not been a part of the game plan for the New York Giants, playing just 15 snaps in week one. He did have a drop over the middle. The game was already out of reach at that point, and most of his snaps, they came in garbage time. In week two, he played just 12 snaps. So 27 snaps for Jalen Hyatt through two weeks of the 2024 NFL season. All offseason long, Brian Dable told me, Brian Dable told you, Daniel Jones told us, and everyone told us, our focus is on being a more explosive football team. How are you going to achieve that if your most explosive receiver outside of Malik Neighbors, I guess you could argue Slayton and Hyatt are on that same page, is not playing football? I don't get it. Is Brian Dable holding Jalen Hyatt in the doghouse. Did something happen in practice, in training camp, in the locker room, in film study? What is going on? Because the excuses and the reasons that Brian Dable is giving, they just aren't clicking in my head. Nobody expected for the Giants to make the playoffs this year. There's a reason their win-loss total was six and a half. No one expected for the Giants to make a playoff push. This year was about development and looking within and trying to find out if there's any pieces on this team that will be here for the long term. And so far, you haven't even given a chance for Jalen Hyatt to prove to me, to prove to you, to prove this organization, and prove to himself that he is a guy that could be a part of this team and contribute going forward. Dable has been asked a couple of different times throughout the first couple of weeks as to why Jalen Hyatt is not playing, talking about he's the third or fourth receiver on this team and so on and so forth. But the quote that he gave after week two, I didn't really understand it all that much. That's what Dable said. I think he got 13 or 14 plays. Again, that's not because of Jalen Hyatt. Slay's doing a nice job with his opportunities of doing the things that he needs to do. And then we sprinkle in Hyatt in particular plays. And then Malik Neighbors, he's been on the field most of the time, and we've mixed in 12, we've mixed in 11 personnel, not as much 10 personnel. But he'll be ready to go when his number is called. I think we need to get stuff out of everybody. But again, the two receivers that do start are Darius Slayton, and Malik Neighbors. He's Hyatt, the third guy in, per se, when we go two receiver sets, and he's the fourth guy in three receiver sets. That was... What? I, look, I get it. I understand it. But, like, the Giants are probably the only team in the NFL that don't have four wide receivers that play. And you can't tell me that you want to be an explosive offense and that Darius Slayton is doing his job well. Darius Slayton is known as a vertical threat. Darius Slayton is known as a guy that takes the top off the defense. He's averaging less than 10 yards per catch. You have nobody on this team right now that plays wide receiver outside of Malik Neighbors that has been able to stretch the field. And maybe that's more so because of Daniel Jones and his, not, his lack of trust in himself to manipulate the pocket, reset the pocket, and fire downfield. But if Darius Slayton's out there just for six receptions on over 80 snaps at the wide receiver position, why can't we split up that rep share and get Jalen Hyatt, the guy you just traded up for, to see if he can get better? Because this is this, that's what this year is about. This year is about development. This year is about finding out if your draft class from 2021, your draft class from 2022, 2023, and 2024 are any players. You just traded up to get Jalen Hyatt. You gave up multiple picks and multiple assets to go out and get him. This is a mismanagement by Brian Dable and the staff. It really, really is. Look, I understand that Darius Slayton is a better wide receiver at this current moment than Jalen Hyatt. But Darius Slayton is what he is. He's not going to get any better. He is a guy that could take the top off the defense, drops the occasional ball, not strong at the catch point, doesn't excel in contested catches, and unless he's got a lot of green grass to run after the catch, he's not very explosive in that regard. You traded up to draft Hyatt. Remember when Brian Dable and Joe Shane, after they drafted Hyatt, scared money don't make money. They're jumping up in the war room, hugging each other. Joe Shane's rubbing Brian Dable's bald head. Everyone's jumping around. It looked like a peewee football team. That was a joke what that looked like. 
And now you don't even play the guy. After last year, he won you the game in week two against the Arizona Cardinals. He brought you back in that second half. He opened up the offense with a deep post that was underthrown by Daniel Jones. It should have been a touchdown. And then on the deep corner route on the left side, he went up and snatched it off the top of the DB's head, and he got you in scoring position. How can you say you want to be an explosive offense when you don't play the receiver that averaged 16.2 yards per catch? The guy that had an average depth of target of more than 20 yards. A guy that had not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six catches of more than six, 20 yards last season. Jalen Hyatt is the most explosive returning wide receiver. And he was working with the ones all summer. Like if you're going to have this guy working with the ones all summer, and you want to tell me we want to be explosive, we want to take shots downfield, we want to open up the offense, and then you don't play the guy that does that, and you're consistently operating in 12 personnel, what the hell was the point of all the reps we worked on in training camp? Mike Grow, the Giants wide receiver coach, he sung the praises of Jalen Hyatt all offseason long. All of the work that he put in, investing in his game, learning what, how, and why. He's just a different guy. He's gotten stronger, but he's playing less than he did in his rookie year. What about Brian Dable? He told me, you, and Dupree that he wants to operate an explosive offense, that he's looking to create mismatches as a play caller in the Giants' hunt for more explosive plays. So you know what he's doing? He's putting Chris Manhurts out there. Chris Manhurts is a third tackle. He doesn't run routes. He's a tight end in his career that's had more pass-blocking snaps then catches. He is an extension of the offensive line. What about Daniel Jones? He said, we're trying to improve and create explosive plays and get the ball downfield. You're not doing it. You're not throwing the ball downfield. And you're never, ever, 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 ever going to be an explosive offense that generates explosive pass plays, that creates chunk plays. If Christopher Man Hurts has 20 more offensive snaps through two weeks than Jalen Hyatt. How on earth are you telling me you want to operate an explosive offense and you come back with two tight end sets and one of those tight ends is a smaller tackle? This is no disrespect to Chris Man Hurts. He's a great blocking tight end, but it's 2024 and it's the sixth year of Daniel Jones. Take the handcuffs off the offense. Your offensive line is improved. You don't need a second tight end to stay in on pass blocking situations anymore. Open it up. Go four receiver sets. Shit, go five wide. Do what you got to do to see if Jalen Hyatt is the guy or not. Or once again, you're going to take your draft assets and pour them in the toilet and flush them. Sometimes in life and in football, you have to invest in your investments. And you're not investing in this guy that you gave up multiple draft picks to move up in the third round to select. I don't get it. I really don't get it. What, if you want Jalen Hyatt to play more, type some 13s in the chat. Type some 13s in the chat if you want Jalen Hyatt to play more football. This guy won you a football game last year. You didn't win many of them. He helped you come back from 20 points down against the Cardinals. And right now, you are one of the least explosive offenses for the 45th year running. Just get him in the game. Because if he's in the game, you know what happens? Safety slides here. Safety slides here. Neighbors has one-on-one -on -one coverage. And if you leave high at one-on-one with no safety, he's taking the top off. Because if he's even, he is leaving. The worst part about this is there are now trade rumors surrounding Jalen Hyatt. And maybe he wants to be traded. We'll talk about that in a second, but first, I got to give a major shout out to today's sponsor, Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the promo code Chat Sports, C H A T S P O R T S, and get $20 off your first purchase where terms do apply. You get the best seats for the lowest price guaranteed. You get to see your seat view, and you get to access your tickets from your phone, and it is easy to resell your tickets. I'm a huge fan of Game Time. It's the only app I use to buy tickets anymore. It's more than just Giants games. You can go to NBA games. You can go to MLB games. You can go to concerts. You can go to theater events, comedy cl clubs, comedy shows, and so much more. Make sure you take advantage of these two features. The all-in pricing. That way you don't get hit with hidden fees when you get to checkout. And the Game Time Picks feature, which is brand new, which pretty much makes it that much more easy to go see your favorite teams, bands, and people perform. Download the Game Time app. Use the promo code CHATSPORTS, C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S, 
and you'll get $20 off your first purchase where terms do apply. All that information is clickable down in the comments and description of today's show. Does Jalen Hyatt want to be traded? Look, there was some stuff that was going on or on Twitter yesterday that, to me, kind of showed that there is more to the story of Jalen Hyatt not playing simply than what Brian Dable told us, which is Darius Slayton's our guy. And he's our fourth wide receiver on two receiver sets and so on and so forth. Bobby Skinner, who is a host for the Talking Giants podcast. Shout out to Bobby. He does awesome work. And he tweeted this out. And Bobby, in my opinion, is not a guy that's going to go out here and spread fake rumors. He didn't do this just because he thought the picture was cool. He did it for a reason. I'm not going to put words in his mouth, but I believe he did this for a reason. It's a picture of Hyatt with a piece of paper that says trade me. And then our guy LPG, license plate guy. If you don't know who he is, he's the most known Giants fan in the world. I think he's been going to games for 30-plus years every single game, every single season. He responded to Bobby Skinner's post, and he said, like I said, there is more to the story. So you have Bobby Skinner, I would say, kind of hinting that there could be some trade drama around Hyatt. And then you got license plate guy saying, like I said, there's more to the story. I don't know what the story is. I don't know what there is more of. But I know what is going on with Jalen Hyatt is simply unacceptable. Whether it's his fault, whether it's Dable's fault, whoever's fault is, I don't know. But if I was Jalen Hyatt and I worked with the number one offense all summer long and you told me that I've improved and you told me I've done everything that I need to do to play football and you want to be explosive and I am Mr. Explosive, go watch the tape against Alabama when I lit him up. Why am I not playing? Like, it's not even that I'm not playing. It's that I'm seeing other wide receivers Get every single rep. Like, you cannot tell me that Darius Slayton deserves 99 reps when Jalen Hyatt deserves 27. Maybe that number should be closer to 75, and that number should be closer to 50. There should not be this big of a snap difference in these two guys. You know why? Because Darius Slayton, he doesn't move the needle in the win-loss column that much more when he's on the field than Jalen Hyatt does. And on top of that, Darius Slayton is going to be a free agent this spring. You already asked him to take a pay cut two years ago. He then came back on a value contract, and after one year of outperforming that contract, he asked for a new deal. You said no. So there's already hostility at the argument and negotiation table between Slayton and between the general manager and the head coach. Do we really think Darius Slayton is going to be on this team next year once he goes to free agency and the Giants cut his buddy, his good old pal, Daniel Jones? It ain't going to happen. And the Giants should think about trading Darius Slayton right now. He already, they should. They absolutely should. He's not coming back. Slayton's already dealt with contract drama. Why on earth would he give the New York Giants any more discounts? One, he's getting older. He probably wants to compete. His best friend's Daniel Jones, and he's not going to be able to play with Jones or probably compete for another two years if he comes back and plays with the New York Giants. Look, at the end of the day, if you don't take anything else from this video, take this. Darius Slate is a better wide receiver than Jalen Hyatt right now. I 100% agree with that. But you cannot tell me that Darius Slayton should have 100 snaps and Jalen Hyatt should have 27. He doesn't move the needle when it comes to winning football games enough to completely eliminate Jalen Hyatt from the game plan and completely stunt the growth of Jalen Hyatt. He doesn't. It should not happen. This season is not about winning games. This season is not about trying to get in the playoffs. Because if it is, then, oh, Lord, we've got bigger problems on our hands. This season is about finding out if the players on your team can be long-term pieces. And Darius Slayton is not a long-term piece to this team. I'm hoping Jalen Hyatt can be. But when you tell him he's going to play all summer, he plays with the ones, he's doing a great job, that's what you told him, head coach and wide receiver coach, quarterback wants to take more shots, and you don't play the guy that takes the top off the defense better than anybody else, I don't know what the hell we're doing. I just don't get it. Like, we already saw last year, Xavier McKinney left for nothing. You could have traded him. You could have traded Saquon Barkley. He left for nothing. Season was lost at the trade deadline last year. I'm hoping that the New York Giants learned from last year and then get something in return at the trade deadline for Darius Slayton. I'm also looking at Zizo Jolari as a guy that's going to be a free agent that could be on the trade block. But that'll be a different video for another day. This is the question I want to ask before we bounce on out of here. Should Jalen Hyatt Get more snaps. Type Y for yes, 
Type N for no, and make sure you are following me over on social media. I'm tweeting, I'm posting every single day about the Giants. At Marshall Green underscore on Twitter, at Marshall Green underscore on Instagram. Hit me up over there, and let's go Big Blue.